So we had 18 guys sign up for preaching. We've had eight go, so we're gonna have one more go. We're gonna get halfway through, and that means that nine of you are not gonna be able to do it tonight, so I apologize for that. So the last guy tonight is Colin. Hey. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Timothy, please. 2 Timothy chapter 2. While you're turning there, we begin to read. Witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this word. Every single word of God is pure. You're a shield to us, Father. I pray, fill me with your spirit now to elaborate on what it means to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right, so the sermon I had tonight, I bounced around a lot of different ideas on what I wanted to touch on because honestly, there's just so little time for so much information. But the question I want to pose to you is, enlisted, but in whose army? Yeah. Enlisted, yeah. but in whose army? See, there's two armies today, okay? There's the army of the flesh. There's the army There's the army of this world that goes out and that fights a physical battle every day that takes a rifle to an enemy and shoots somebody. And then there's the army that goes out with the word of God, the sword that is quick and powerful, that divides under, even unto the soul and spirit and is the discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. And that spirit, that sword is the one that we take out as the army of the Lord and we fight the battles of the army every day. Every day is a battle in this life. Every day that we fight, we are making a difference. Every day that we fight, we are doing something for the Lord. And every day that we stand out, we are allowing the enemy to advance. In military combat, there is no ceasefire. There is no moment where things are just at an armistice. There's not a time in, in point in the spiritual warfare where the devil takes a day off where he just says, you know, yeah. oh, if they don't go so in today, I guess yeah. I'll take a day off yeah, and go to right. the beach. Right. Yeah. That doesn't happen in this life. Uh -huh. We don't get the opportunity to just sit back and relax. This life is not about sitting back and relaxing. This life is about the work that we have to do. Amen. We have the work. Jesus said, I came to do the work of my father. Amen. Did he not? Yeah. He said, I'm here to do the work that God has for me. We're not here to sit back and relax and to take it easy. We're not here to go to the beach and sip an orange juice and look at the waves and say, man, that looks pretty. Amen. That's not what life is about. Amen. You know, every single one of you has an opportunity in this life to conscript in one of these two armies. You have the opportunity. You know, some people conscript in a physical army. Some people go and they join in armed forces. Let me have, I'm going to tell you right now, if you join the armed forces of the military right now as the way it is, you are not right with God. Right. I'm, I'm, just gonna, I'm just going to park on that for a second. I'm going to explain a few points, which is really what I want to touch on. The first thing is that the point of the military is to brainwash you. Turn with me right. to Romans 12. Right. Turn with me to Romans 12. Verse 1. Give you guys a second to get there. Man, I love the preaching at this conference. Amen. Amen. Chapter 1, chapter 12, verse 1, excuse me. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The world is going to conform you to its image. And a physical military will do exactly that. It is the tip of the spear of the devil trying to conform you to the ideology of this world. When you go through a boot camp, you're going through a place that's going to teach you that sodomy is okay, that transgenderism is okay. It's going to put every single ideology of the world, women wearing pants, women serving in the military, every single ideology that this world wants to push on you, the military is the tip. Of the spear. Amen. You can't serve in the military right now and be right with God. Here's another reason. Turn with me over to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 19. When I was, I'm going to tell you a story. When I was in the military, I wasn't saved when I first joined, okay? God doesn't just look at me and say, oh, you know, he's a Christian, but he joined the military. I'll give him some extra grace. No, God had some mercy on me because I did it ignorantly in an unbelief. You don't go and you join something knowing the consequences of what God's going to do to you if you put yourself in that kind of position. And then just expect that God is going to give you extra grace. That's not how it works. Oh, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, What? 
Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Look, you cannot join the military today and be right with God, because the military wants to force vaccines with baby parts, unborn baby parts, into your bodies. Do you understand that? They want to take you and to make you an unwilling participant in the abortion holocaust that is going on in this world. Do you understand the implication of that? The blood of people's hands, the blood of innocent children will be on your hands because you participated in it. Yep. Yeah, right. That is not something to trifle with. Nope. Amen. Amen. But not just the blood of people who are innocent in the womb, but it is the blood of innocent people all across this nation. Turn with me to 2 Samuel chapter 21. And I realize, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand there's a price for standing up for the truth. Every day, you're going to be held accountable by somebody. You know, you could be a private in the army of the Lord just kind of getting into the ideologies here. You could be a sergeant where you're starting to be held accountable for the actions you do. You can be an officer where you are making decisions that affect soul winning, that affect going out and the effectiveness of the army. You can be a general who makes the decisions led by God, who takes orders from above that makes sure that the army of the Lord marches in the direction that it is called. Where are you? Where are you in that army? The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 21, I know I'm bouncing around a little bit here. The Bible says, there was a famine in the days of David, verse 1, three years, year after year. And David inquired of the Lord, and the Lord answered, it is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Now, I want you to understand something. The Bible doesn't really go into depth about the story other than right here. Because we have Saul, who's talked about in a lot of different battles, but this is the first time that we hear about the Gibeonites. See, Saul and his zeal had gone out and he had shed innocent blood. And I want you to understand something. The United States military is out there in its zeal shedding innocent blood. Do you understand that today? Out there in its zeal shedding innocent blood. Aggression in other countries where we don't have a basis to be. What's the point of an army? The point of an army is to defend its country. Is it not? What's That's the point right. Of an army? What is the point of our army? It's to go and advance the gospel and it's to defend the flock. Is it not? Yeah. What do we do with preaching but we defend the flock? What am I up here even doing but defending you from making a bad decision? Amen. What is he even up here doing but defending you from making bad decisions, from helping you not get into sin? He is defending the flock. Amen. That's the point of an army. A standing army is there to defend the flock and to fight the just battle. You know, our. You, we have, we have a hymn in the, in the hymn book. It's actually in the songs, in Soul Stirring Songs and Hymns hymn book. But it is, it is the anthem of this country. And you know, it used, it, there's a second verse. I don't know if any of you guys have ever heard it. But it says, They conquer we must when our cause it is just. And this be our motto in God do we trust. Yep. You know, that's used, that used to be something that was common knowledge in people's hearts. Yep. Why? Because we don't conquer without a cause. We don't go out and fight without a cause. Now, we're in the army of the Lord, aren't we? We go out and we fight with a cause. Yep. We go out and we fight the spiritual battles. We fight the principalities of this world, the spiritual darkness, the wickedness in high places. And what do we, what do, we do? We fight it with the gospel. We yep. fight it with yep. preaching. We fight it by bringing the fight out to the people, warning the sheep, going out to the lost, warning them of a lost and dying hell. But you know what? We're not going out and we're not shedding innocent blood. We're not going out to the laws and saying, hey, did you know that Romans 1 says that reprobates can't be saved? What's our point? Our point's not to go out and shed innocent blood to try and cause casualties where we could be focusing on the gospel, bringing people into the fold, and then sharing these doctrines with them, teaching them and helping them to grow in their faith. No, we're not out there to cause contention, to cause strife, to cause problems. We're out there with one purpose, and it is because our cause, it is just, it is to reach people with the gospel, is it not? Amen. Shame on any of you if you go out there just to die, just to debate with people, yeah, just to right, dialogue right, about right, the right, problems right, in this world, right, just to dialogue right, about the issues that we have in this movement, the hot topics, the post trip rapture, Zionism, all of the doctrines that we have. Shame on you if all you are doing is dialoguing and debating on those things. Yeah, we right. have one purpose. We have one mission out there to reach the lost, and it is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen, that's amen brother. Soul winning. Yes, amen. Don't get distracted. You know, that's that's what generals and officers in the army are for. That's what soul winning captains are for. You know, they're there to make sure that you're straight on the point, that you're on the straight and narrow, fighting the fight, moving the direction that they want you to go. You know, that's their purpose. You know, strive for that purpose in the army of the Lord. You can have a place. You know, every person is going to be held accountable at some level. It's where you want to be held accountable. 
You have an opportunity to be held accountable for your actions. You have an opportunity to prove faithful for your actions and be accountable for other people's actions and for lead to lead people in this army, to do the work that God has for this movement, to stand up, to be the tip of the spear, to speak the truth, to cry aloud and spare not and lift up your voice like a trumpet. Amen. You have the opportunity Amen. to do that in this movement. Ladies, you have an opportunity to preach the gospel out there. Lead other ladies and do that work. You have the opportunity in this movement. Amen. You have an opportunity to lead. Amen. Where are you at? Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this time we've gotten to spend your word. I pray that you'd make it a blessing in people's hearts. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Good preaching. Amen. Great, great night tonight. This guy's did a great job. And uh, I just want to just say real quickly, just as we, as we finish, the Red Hot Preaching Conference is over. And uh, God bless you. Thank you for being here. And we hope you'll be back next year. And uh, we're going to have a great time next year. We're already planning the next conference. <laughs> so, um, we got ice cream. We got seven huge tubs. And we should have enough for everybody. And uh, for those of you guys that wrote sermons and prepared and you didn't get paid, uh, you know, maybe next year, you know, it'll, it'll work out that way. But we knew going into this, not, not everybody's going to be able to be paid. We're going to have Brother Stucky come and uh, lead us in the final song. We got a baptism tonight? Yes, all right. We got a baptism. We got Brother Stucky, baptism, ice cream. All right? Uh, <laughs> 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 Turn to 411.